right behind Monzon and Hagler. He claims that he's the executioner only in the sense that he executes his game plans and his punches the way he says Reggie Miller executes his jump shots. But I think he has something else in mind here, Jim. Well, he said he loved the movie The Green Mile and bought the DVD because he felt it was the perfect entertainment complement to his identity as the executioner. Anybody who's seen it knows why. And the record for Bernard Hopkins, originally from Philadelphia, now living in a suburb in Delaware across the river, lost his first professional fight, lost to Roy Jones in 1993, otherwise virtually untouchable. 27 KOs among his victories. You know, as you're watching this telecast this evening, we remind you that you can log on to our website, www.hbo.com slash boxing to chat and score each round of Hopkins Vanderpool and Jones Hall. Following tonight's main event, there's a live chat with boxing journalist Steve Farhood. And how about the website question? In our opening, we showed you Roy Jones being named by the Boxing Writers Association as the fighter of the decade. Here's our question to you tonight. Was Roy Jones the fighter of the 90s, or should another fighter have received this honor? Should it have been perhaps Oscar De La Hoya or Evander Holyfield or Roy Jones Jr., or should it have been Felix Trinidad, or should it have been Lennox Lewis? Write in anybody you believe deserved the honor. We'll provide the results later in the telecast. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Conseco Field House right here in Indianapolis, Indiana. M&M Sports, Murad Muhammad, a promoter in association with Square Ring. Caesars Indiana, Jordan Brand, and Pacers Sports and Entertainment present HBO World Championship Boxing. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the Indiana Boxing Commission Chairman, William Kelsey. For this first bout, the three judges assigned at ringside, scoring on the 10-point must system will be Harry Davis, George Hill, and Fred Jones, and when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Bill Page. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Middleweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white and weighing in at 159 and one half pounds. His professional record, 29 bouts. 28 victories, including 18 knockouts, with only one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, here is the IBF number three ranked middleweight challenger in the world, Sid the Jewel Thunderpool. And across the ring, in the red corner, Wearing black, trimmed with gold, and weighing 158 and one half pounds. As a professional, he has an outstanding record of 36 victories, including 27 knockouts, with only two losses and one draw. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, making his 11th title defense, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning and defending IBF middleweight champion of the world, Bernard. The Executioner Hopkins! Come on out when you're ready, Bernard. Sid, come on out when you're ready. Listen to me when I say break. Both of you quit punching, take one step backwards. Any questions? Touch gloves and good luck, guys. <laughs> Need to take the belts. Need to take the belts. All right. Where'd he go? This in May. Gentlemen, start your fists. <laughs> Ready? You ready? Well, as one who spent several years going to the big race, 
You ready? I can tell you, and you've both seen in the last couple days, there's a liveliness about Indianapolis in May that is energizing and exciting. And there's a left hand by Sid Vanderpool to start the fight, which is exciting for him. Hopkins' professed goal here is to steal the show from Roy Jones. And he might get a chance to do it with a knockout if he can go straight up the middle inside against Vanderpool's wide offerings. But Vanderpool landing the right hand twice and a couple of straight left hands there is the aggressor early in the fight. Well, you want enthusiasm. Here, bit of a That's what Van der Poel is doing. It's a That's bit of a surprise because he has a reputation as being a, a kind of a cutie, left-handed boxer. But he comes out to bang here in the early going, doesn't he, George? Yeah, and that's what I said. You're gonna, you want enthusiasm to overcome an experienced veteran like this. Don't play around this boxing cute game. Overtake him. Overtake him. It doesn't matter what foot is in front. Just go for it. I'm reminded of what Winky Wright did against Vargas. He had a reputation as a boxer, and he came out charging and almost pulled off an upset. Well, you don't want a reputation when you're trying to be champ of the world. You just overtake. Well, and, and part of Vanderpool's motivation here may be, uh, unlike Winky Wright against Vargas, you're going against a guy who's 35 years old and, and has a lot of ring work on him. You never know when a fighter like Hopkins might slip a little bit, and early aggression can be just the medicine to, to take Hopkins out of the fight if he doesn't have his full game with him tonight. They don't really slip. You just make them slip. You jump on them. Don't sit back and wait for your chance. Do you have an opportunity to fight for the title? The odds are against you. Take it. Just get out there and take it. Vanderpool took the fight on only three months, three weeks notice, but looks ready and has banged Hopkins into the ro ropes twice early here in the fight. Well, you see the veteran put a move on him now. It's getting slick. Take his heart away from him. That's what you don't want. Vander, Vanderpool's corner should tell him to just attack like this for 12 rounds. Doesn't matter how many punches you land, just attack, attack. Well, the veteran fighter like Hopkins, he's not going to invest in an attack. He's going to save all his energy for the last two or three rounds. You can see that Hopkins is the rangier fighter, but he hasn't gotten his jab going early. Hopkins on the defensive because Vanderpool has come out swinging. That's one thing you don't want a young fighter to get their heads down. The veterans know how to put their elbows on the back of the neck, and that will sap all the energy. You gotta tell him to keep his head up. one feels quick good. Hopkins goes good. back to listen to Bowie Fisher don't wait for him to charge let him see the left hand moving I want to see something in there. open your mouth I want to see your hands move I want to see the jab move let him see that jab all right he's trying to count you know? all right let him try to count Just keep your hands up high don't finish tall okay that's down the pipe when you get him on the rope sit down on the three four sit down on the three four you understand me all right Looking good, baby. Looking good, baby. I ah, don't stand on the floor, man. Let your mother talk to baby now. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, listen. Shoot that jab straight, okay? Shoot that left hand straight off of it. All right. Straight. Straight as an arrow, right? He backs into the rope. Sit down. Drop your three, four on it. Drop it on it. Sid Vanderpool smiling over at us and attempting to get George's attention. Like so many fighters appearing for the first time on HBO's World Championship Boxing, Vanderpool wants George to acknowledge that he's here. <laughs> but Vander, Vanderpool is doing a good job. That's right, make the veteran fight. That's what the veteran can do, throw all his punches away. Hopkins with a chopping right hand landed to the back of Vanderpool's ear. Got in a body shot too as Vanderpool was coming off the ropes. You want to start the fight to make the veteran use some of that energy he's kind of uh, be conservative with. But don't stop and start thinking. Copy box numbers in round number one. Favorite Vanderpool, who threw 60 punches to only 23 for Bernard Hopkins, landed 11 to only five for the executioner. So Bernard Hopkins all but took the first round off, getting a sense of what Sid Vanderpool might want to do in this fight. 
This is when you want to go back to your corner and have your corner tell you to keep doing what you, you've been doing. You Got to be in shape, but you can do it. Hopkins with a little grin on his face now as he tries to go to work here in the second round. Right hand lead. Classic tactic against a southpaw stance. Vanderpool has an excellent chance to overtake Hopkins. Whenever he moves away, drops his defense, doesn't have anything, he's not in position to do anything, so you got to charge him. Just charge him. It doesn't matter if you hit him good. Break it, don't punch, don't punch. Let it go, let it go. Vanderpool seems off balance after throwing yep, any of his punches. And he doesn't want to get on balance with a fighter like this. You want to just throw punches from awkward positions. The veteran can't deal with that. Well, I don't know that anybody can, George, but if he keeps just throwing them awkwardly and falling off balance, he's going to walk, walk into a big punch sooner or later. I don't think so. That veteran is too conservative. He's going to get back and try to get in position. He's not going to, and he's not going to try to counter. He's just throwing, hurting his hands a little bit with those aqua shots. You see that veteran, every time he hit Hopkins, Hopkins cover up and hold. If I'm in Vanderpool's corner, I tell him attack. It doesn't matter if you hit him, just keep swinging. The wilder, the better. Because the early issue here for Hopkins is his energy level. When is he going to begin trying to impose his will on the fight? instead of responding to what Vanderpool does. That's right, he's wrestling and trying to get some energy up and he doesn't have it. The clock is ticking on Bernard Hopkins' desire to make an imprint on the sport. Tonight could be a very significant night for him because waiting in the dressing room and ready to fight in the main event is the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing, Roy Jones Jr. And Jones has had a fabulous time in the buildup to this fight, which he chose to stage here in Indianapolis on March 29 when they announced that the bout would be here. Roy was carried through the streets on a throne like royalty on his way to the news conference, which announced the date here in the Conseco Arena. And then a few days ago, a sampling from Roy's upcoming rap album to be released in August. Somebody else owns to fight. I'm nice, I'm like heavyweight champion. No, who wanna get knocked out? Who wanna fight Roy Jones? Who wanna be next? I'm knocking your lights out. I'm taking you right out. I'm winning this fight. I'm putting my belt on. I'm taking my belt home. Bring somebody else on to fight. I'm nice, I'm like. I guess that explains, Jim, why uh, fighters who make their living rapping each other are so enamored of rap music. Now Van der Poel starts to jab a little bit. You can order the album early, Larry, by going <laughs> to your local record dealer and making the point that you want the Jones album the moment it's released. In round two, by CompuBox numbers, Hopkins again threw only 23 punches. So Vanderpool is getting an opportunity to put his imprint on the fight here early as Hopkins watches and waits to see what the challenger does. And that's what you want the veteran to do. Make him wait, wait, wait for 12 rounds to get in a good shot. Vanderpool doesn't want to make a, the mistake of start thinking because he's not the better thinker in this fight. Now, anytime a southpaw fights against a conventional fighter, you watch to see if the conventional fighter, in this case Hopkins, is right working hand by Hopkins, first time. Yep is working to keep his lead foot outside of Vanderpool's lead foot, the right foot. So far, Vanderpool is the one with his foot on the outside. If there's a tactical battle there, he's winning it for the moment. Now, Hopkins is able to deliver his straight right hands now. That may change things. Get Vanderpool to stop and think for a second. He's out of the fight. Hopkins got in a little left hook to the body there as he advanced toward the ropes. Once you start with your energy, you got to keep it up. You just can't wait. Start breathing. Right Another hand right lead hand. again. The jab always sends him to the rope. Vanderpool. Right hand to the body by Hopkins, right in the middle of Vanderpool's chest. And that may be an important shot right there. You can change things with those body punches, especially around the chest. Hopkins is very wise. 
If you see Vanderpool begin to short arm his punches a little bit, you'll know that Hopkins' work on the upper body has had an effect. Now he has Vanderpool stopping and waiting and thinking. That's what he wanted him to do. A good body punch will make you stop. Hard left hand to the body by Vanderpool. And they go down in a clinch. It'll definitely be ruled a slip. Vanderpool appeared to be trying to got let the referee the know that he had gotten hidden below the belt. Exactly. He was pointing to a spot below his belt. When you're fighting for a title, it doesn't matter what happened. You can't complain. If you're a contender, you got to fight for it. This has all the makings of a pretty ugly fight because Vanderpool hits, runs, holds, stays away, leaps in. In fact, a headbutt would not be out of the question here. A little bit, son. Close your eyes. I want to see that hand move. Wipe that eye right there. Don't worry about it. You see? You see? You see? He's getting, he's getting shook up now, okay? But I want that straight left hand. Boom, boom, boom. Right down the pike on it. Right down the pike. He's getting shook up, okay? Okay? He's getting shook up, son, okay? Here's where they fling themselves into each other. I'm not sure what Vanderpool is complaining about. Yeah, he got hit below the belt, that's what. He got tapped there, George. No, there's no such thing as taps down there, Larry. There's a little spot there right below the <laughs> little cup. If you get touched there, you're gonna cry. You don't have to hit it hard. So be it. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, I got a two to one, 29-28, Bernard Hopkins. You know, Jim, the first round, Sid Van definitely won. But to tell you the honest the truth, in the two wrestling rounds, two and three, I thought if anybody landed clean punches, it was Bernard Hopkins with that right hand. But the only thing is, to get outside of his right foot, like you call Jim, he must circle to his left. And Bernard Hopkins is circling the wrong way, trying to square up in front of Sid Van Der this is the direction in which Oscar De La Hoya circled for 12 rounds against Pernell Whitaker, oh, oh, breaking, breaking. and he took no his breaking. left hook out of the fight by doing so. If Hopkins wants to make his left hook a factor, and it's a good punch for him, he needs to move in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it, but if you're a good fighter, you don't change anything for any fighter. That's the one thing about it. Forget about tactics. If you're a good fighter, you believe in yourself, make the other fighter change. And Hopkins is beginning to pick his shots more effectively now as Vanderpool slows down through the middle of round four. And he's throwing left hooks to the body. He's out of this conventional style. You don't want to start moving around looking for the right positions when you're a good fighter. Make the other guy start that stuff. The Pacers, who lost their playoff game in Philadelphia earlier today, had every intention as a group of coming in here and going to the fight tonight. A couple of the players on the team, Reggie Miller and Mark Jackson, Jalen Rose as well, all very instrumental in helping convince Roy Jones to bring the fight to Indianapolis, and they wanted to be here. But we're told that they've got weather problems getting out of Philly, so we may not see the pace of players coming into the arena tonight. They had some weather problems, particularly in the first three quarters against the Sixers today, too. Vanderpool has stopped charging. He's waiting around, and that's what you don't want him doing in there with this veteran fighter. You got to keep the unorthodox, throwing your body, throwing your head, turn your body into a bowling ball style. Once you stop that, you got no fight. You got no chance at all. Waiting around is what Hopkins want him to do. Stop. Think. Bob Weed. When the two fighters launch aggression, both tend to lean forward with their heads, as you can see. Hopkins was able to get a good left hook to the body that time. Right hand by Vanderpool upstairs. This not, Hopkins is a smooth cookie, I'm telling you. Not a lot of mustard on it. Hopkins checked Vanderpool out for the first couple of rounds and is now fighting with considerable confidence as he feels he's found the holes in Vanderpool's game. No better say. 
Quick left took inside by Hopkins as Vanderpool is coming in. Four rounds in the books. Vanderpool's early aggression beginning to melt away. Join us May 15 for the premiere of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. One of the stories to be featured, Philadelphia Flyer coach Roger Nielsen, his treatment, and his battle against bone marrow cancer. Real sports, where nothing is out of bounds. In the sports world, it's been a bad year for cancer. Lance Armstrong, Andres Galarraga, Roger Nielsen, all fighting back. You understand me? All right? Back him up with this jab. Back him up with a jab. Drop the straight left hand on him in a 3 4. You understand what I'm saying? Now, this is what I want, son. Let's get it done, okay? This is what I want. Don't, just don't finish the song. You're rich. The warrior. Be deep. Be deep. Good. Okay, work your set, work your set, work your set, son. Hands right. If the face of trainer Bowie Fisher is familiar to you, it's because of the frequent appearances here on HBO over the course of the past few years by lightweight Ivan Robinson. Bowie Fisher, longtime trainer to both Hopkins and Ivan Robinson. You saw Ivan here a few weeks ago. Losing to Antonio Diaz on the undercard of Fernando Vargas versus side Quartet. Good right hand by Hopkins. Vanderpool staggered into the ropes. Now you see Hopkins is the aggressor. He's not moving back as he was in the first couple of rounds. Whenever something happened, he stands his ground. He's in position. That's what you didn't want this veteran doing, getting in position. You wanted to keep him out of position. with a hard right hand to the belly. Vanderpool missing twice up top as Bernard was able to duck under his punches. Just from the look on Vanderpool's face, you can see that the confidence with which he fought in the first couple of rounds has begun to ebb away. Well, once your energy is gone, you got to have something to replace it. He doesn't have the experience. You just got to keep charging and just get what you can get. Good hard body shots by Hopkins. Right and the left, both just under the rib cage. Now Hopkins steps forward a little bit now. Don't hold him and hit. Don't hold him and hit. Hopkins getting in one shot, holding and hitting before referee Bill Page warned him off of the second one. You can't allow Hopkins to sit there and think. You just got to charge him, even if you miss him. Once the fight starts, stay in the middle of the ring. The veteran has the, the advantage. Vanderpool is, stands back. Once he lands a shot, he jumps back. You can't do it. All this action benefits Vanderpool because he's taking some of the energy away from the veteran who's saving his stuff for the last few rounds. But at the same time, Hopkins would appear to be headed toward winning the round. Well, Hopkins, yep, he's taking over the fight, no doubt about it. But you just got to keep him burning energy. Hopkins to keep it up, but the body punches are having an effect. The Larrett by the punch uh, below the belt was a little different from the other one. That's why it doesn't bother. Hopkins got in a little counter right hand. Vanderpool lands with a left. Hopkins with a bigger left in return. And Bernard likes the way it's going for him now. You're getting close. You're getting close. Get close. Just don't get Kelly. Just don't get Kelly. All right. Okay. Give me a little more, a little more force with the left hand. I want to see a little more force with the left hand. Don't worry about whether it's landing or not. Let him see that hand move. That's what I want to see. All right. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. He's thin around the body. Okay. But you're not going after him. You're after him. You got, you got the hand speed. You got the hand speed. Let's see you use it. Jam, 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 and drop them shots on him, son. Okay. Come on now, Sid. All right. Come on now. Okay. All right? Me and you, we're going too far together now, okay? You understand me? Often you see Southpaws getting tangled up with their front foot. There you see a classic example of it. 
why Vanderpool went to the canvas. All right, box. And you heard Sid Vanderpool's dad, Keith Vanderpool, in the corner. His father is his trainer, saying we've come too far together, son. Trying to inspire Sid to go back to the helter-skelter activity that served him so well in the first couple of rounds. Urging him to try to get in and go to Hopkins' body, but of course, it's Bernard Hopkins who's been doing the bulk of the body damage, although Hopkins has to acknowledge a good little left hand in there by Vanderpool. Once you hurt these guys and they shake their heads, you gotta attack. That's an indication that he can't see or something is wrong. I'll bet you never had much doubt about whether your opponents were hurt, George. <laughs> A little bit of blood coming from Vanderpool's nose. That's because you run into the face of those southpaws like that. Good left hand to the body and a hard right hand to the body by Vanderpool. And I think those body punches by, by Vanderpool may be a good investment also. That's why his dad was asking him to do it. You want to take his energy away like he's trying to do your end. Take your energy. Now he has the veteran moving. Just keep him moving. Don't allow him to stop for one second. You heard Vanderpool's corner. You've got the speed, you've got the hand speed. Go to work on him. Vanderpool fighting with a little bit more confidence in this round. Hopkins need his right foot steady to do anything. If you make him move that right foot, you can just attack him and attack him. He doesn't use his left foot as a pivot at all. He so what's right the best foot. way to make a fighter move his back foot, George? You just go at him, just go at him so he has to pick that, that right foot up, the left foot up and move it backwards. Make him keep picking it up. As long as he can keep that right foot steady, then you're in bad shape. He can. Hopkins is doing a little roughnecking himself. And that's what you want to do. Make the veterans do everything they don't want to do. And Vanderpool pulling his head back to avoid the butt as Hopkins drove him into the ropes like a linebacker driving a running back back into the hole. He picks up his leg, that's what you gotta do. Keep him picking that left leg so that he can cross it. And go to his body too. But don't let him get set like he's doing now. You want him out of that position. That was not because of the power of the punch. It was a little both that time. <laughs> That was mostly linebacker stuff. Restive crowd waiting for the action to heat up as we reach the midway point of the middleweight championship fight between Bernard Hopkins and Sid Vanderpool. Meanwhile, if there's a fighter here tonight who's less known than Sid Vanderpool, it's Richard Hall, one of those politically connected number one ranked contenders who has risen to the top of a particular governing body's ranking list by beating a string of fighters whose names we don't know. Hall is upset at me for having suggested in a promo a couple of weeks ago that I don't think the Hall-Jones fight will be competitive. I told him to be a good idea for him to prove me wrong. Go with the loop and go with the sets. The Here we see a clinch, a punch, That's the punch. and a takedown. That's what it is again. Two punches. What sport is that? Australian rules boxing. Go, guys, fight time. Hopkins comes out immediately and takes control of the middle of the ring. That's what you want to do. Take a little bit of the heart out of your opponent. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Okay, Jim, I got it 42, 58, 56, Bernard Hopkins. Jim, in that round six, uh, Sid Vanderpool got inside and banged the body nicely. He did some damage in round six, but other than that, those middle rounds between one and six, I thought Bernard Hopkins clearly won with those clean right hands. I wouldn't be shocked if a judge gave round two to Vanderpool. I wouldn't be shocked if a judge gave him round three. So it's at least conceivable to me that you could find a scorecard here with Vanderpool ahead. What about Larry? How do you have it, Larry? Larry, I, Larry thinks that Hopkins is winning the fight. Hasn't lost a round since the first round. But there have been a lot of close 
hard to score rounds here. Both fighters landing one punch at a time. Hopkins doing it more often. Now Hopkins bunches his punches and lands three body blows. And he gets out of the way. What you want to do is hit and spin your guy, get out of the way. That's an art that has been lost in boxing. And Bernard Hopkins, almost as though he had listened to Larry's statement about one punch at a time, fired a four-punch combination, all with the left hand. You know, Indianapolis has uh, something of a history as a, as a light heavyweight town because of Marvin Johnson, a good light heavyweight champion in the 80s. This fight is like liable to convince them that they're a light heavyweight. <laughs> Are you up? Are you up? Are you up? What's going on? Did you hit low? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Did you hit him low? I'm trying to find I know. You hear what, Fox, you hear what you happened? Go. Vanderpool said he's hitting me low, and uh, Bernard Hopkins said he's trying to fake it to the referee because the referee didn't see it. Swinging wildly. Now. That's the way you got to do it, Ben Lapoon. Don't turn this into a boxing match. Vanderpool apparently angered by Hopkins' tactics over there against the ropes. This fight is beginning to look like Prince Nassim Hamed against Cesar Soto. <laughs> well, this guy's been trying to spin him. Hopkins has been doing all the spinning. He gets under this guy and he just lays his body on him. some information. Well, Vanderpool succeeded in getting the crowd into the fight. He should get angry during the round, not after the round. <laughs> Look, get mad now. Yeah. Get mad now. Yeah. Let's win the round. All right. Okay? Let's win. He don't think he's going to try and come out there. Let's, let's go after his ass. Let's go after his ass. You understand me? Yes? You go over to switch sides. The double shots inside. All right? One shot, we're not worried about one shot. Got a couple of more takedowns to show you. <laughs> Vanderpool holding on for dear life. Hopkins. See that up by He hit him below the belt. So not very hard again. Not very hard, but he did hit him he below him the in belt. And that, that, that sensitive spot, I'm telling you, is more important than you think. Most people have no idea. And the crafty Hopkins appeared to know that the referee couldn't see it yeah. as he took a double shot down there. It does not take a hard shot certain parts of you below the belt. All you got to do is touch it. Quit jumping up on top of him. Let's go. Hopkins evidently is a very wise cat. Yep. He knew what he was doing. Or certainly it so appeared. And now Vanderpool in trouble as Hopkins drives him into the ropes. That's what you want him to do. Make Hopkins throw away some of that energy. Make him mix it up. Make him get dirty. Make this fight ugly. Make it ugly. They trade uppercuts. Hopkins does more damage. You don't, want, you don't want to it say that I fought a good, clean, heavy, a light heavyweight title match. I lost. Middleweight. Make it up. Middleweight and lost. Say, I fought the hardest fight of my life if you lose. Let's go. Let's go. Right up right there, baby. Right hand uppercut lands between the guard. Doing it again. Hopkins knows every trick. How to hit on the break, how to sneak in the low blow, how to hold and hit. He's shown every one of those tactics, and in a gentlemanly way, too, in these first eight rounds here. There was a great trainer from Indianapolis by the name of Hiawatha Gray. He taught Archie Moore a lot of his tricks. So in this area, there exists a lot of knowledge of boxing. Well, Hopkins is from Philadelphia and Vanderpool's from Toronto, but they're honoring Hiawatha Gray in their way, aren't they? <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> Every little trick in the book, so it's coming alive. Hiawatha, Hiawatha would Gray. be proud. Good left hand inside by Vanderpool. 
Hopkins lands the straight right. And the left hook. And a hard counter right hand by Hopkins. Oh, that hurt. Yep, Vanderpool momentarily staggered. Hopkins taking his time. Vanderpool holding on. That right hand may have been the most damaging blow of the fight. That Vanderpool is really fighting hard, but he's catching a lot of hard shots. The problem is he can hardly fight, George. Yeah, but that's the way you win fights, not hardly being able to fight. Just fight. <laughs> win boxing matches, I mean. Fight. Oh, there's some mean swelling on Vanderpool's head. Yeah, there's a uh, welt above his right eye. Right on the forehead. Left hand lands for Vanderpool. Hopkins with a right to the body. Round eight seemed to belong to the champion who landed one large counter right. Self-talk. Let me get near you. Focus. Okay, listen. You're blowing the fight. You're blowing the fight. You hear me? All right. Okay. If you don't give me this last couple rounds, George, you lose it. Right, look at the lump right. on Vanderpool's forehead. Could that have come from a punch, or must that necessarily have been from a collision of heads? I think it was a collision of heads. Yeah, I would think so. Heads yeah. and running it. Early in the round, clean right inside. Vanderpool took it well. That was a punch that could have done some damage. Round nine begins. Check it. Round eight, I should say. Well, Vanderpool has gotten the version of you're blowing it, son. You're blowing it. Let's see if he can do anything about it. If Vanderpool can just hurt Hopkins this round, he can take his heart from it. You ain't He's got to get in there and hurt him. This graphic's wrong. This is the ninth round you're watching here, ladies and gentlemen. Not the eighth. This is the ninth. That's what you want to do. You want to hurt the veterans in the latter rounds because that's when they think they can take over. Hopkins has some swelling around his eyes as well. But nothing to compare with the huge lump that's on Vanderpool's forehead above his right eye. Nice right jab there by Vanderpool. Vanderpool with a chopping left hand. Hopkins comes back with a combination. Vanderpool's hurt. Hopkins landed a counter right. Vanderpool was playing possum. Got Hopkins back. Ah, Vanderpool's got a trick or two up his sleeve. Absolutely. A 360. <laughs> <laughs> that's called, that's the old Boog Powell theory of, of hitting. Swing hard just in case you hit something. <laughs> Even a blind squirrel finds some nuts occasionally. Hopkins is a little dazed, and this guy... <laughs> Vanderpool has no idea. He's letting him get back into the game, letting him clear his head. Hopkins was probably dazzled by the 360. Put your hand back. Let his hand go. That's where the heads are starting to butt right there. a lot of members of the Pacers who could have produced a 360 windmill dunk. Maybe youngster Al Harrington or uh, Jonathan Bender, but certainly not the Rick Smitzes of the world. But Vanderpool gave the crowd a thrill. Gave me a Hard thrill. right hand by Hopkins. It gave me a thrill, Jim. I don't think I've ever seen a complete 360. Whoa. Hopkins getting his chances now here in round nine. He's got Landing a couple of big shots. He had him hurt. Got to go for the finish. Now Vanderpool lands a counter right hand, and Hopkins plays a little possum of his own. Got a possum hunt here. They're matching trick hunt. for trick. <laughs> <laughs> Hop 
Hawkins seems amused by it all as he smiles back to his corner. Quite close, baby. Quite close. I don't hurt that round. Yo, I saw four punches. I'm not looking for one or two big shots, Bernard. I'm looking for, for combinations of punches in there. You need these rounds? You need the rounds. You need to close strong here. You give this guy a chance. You're fiddle fucking around here, son. You're fiddle fucking around. Get your goddamn hands moving. Be quiet, Keith. Get your goddamn hands moving. You understand me? I'm getting a little tired of this now. I can't get in here and do it for you. Not that I would any goddamn way. But listen, let's get it done. All right. I mean, what's he got? Nothing. He ain't got nothing that you haven't seen before. Well, we, we, we seem to need a gymnastics judge here more than a fight judge for some of the lunges that Vanderpool has taken. And here's the 360 if you want to see that one again. <laughs> I give him a 9.8 on that, but not as a punch. Hard right hand by Vanderpool as Hopkins charges in. You heard Bowie Fisher saying to Bernard Hopkins that he thinks the fight is close and saying, Bernard, I don't want one or two big shots. I want you to fire combinations. Harold Letterman, how do you see it through nine? No, Jim, I don't agree. I got it 7 to 2, 88 83, Bernard Hopkins. If anybody is scoring clean punches, it's Hopkins. Sid Vanderpool misses a darn many punches, Jim, and that's all there is to it. What he does is is flashy, but he does too much covering up, not enough punching. Bernard lands the clean shots. Hopkins deserves to win his fight. 7 to 2, 88 83. Hopkins. Hopkins also landing some of the dirtiest punches, too. It's holding, spinning, and hitting behind the back. The referee seems to let him do it. Vanderpool has a lot of knockouts on his record, but only one of them passed the seventh round. So if he's looking to pull something out here, the odds would seem to be against him. But you never know. Hopkins complain about those braids or those. One judge from Canada, one from Pennsylvania, one from Indiana. They are not judges with whom we're familiar from our previous HBO boxing experiences. So you never know. See, look, at, it gets behind him. Spins out. Good, straight. Left hand to the body by Vanderpool. Yeah, you can see why Vanderpool has been beating the kind of opposition he's faced. He he's got heart. Punch. He's willing to fight. And he has a good punch. He's a resolute puncher. That's exactly right. Technically, he's not in Hopkins League. Oh, he switched on him. Straight right hand by Hopkins. Doubling up to the body. Hopkins, from what he said to Bowie Fisher between rounds the last time, obviously thinks he's got a shot at a late KO here of Vanderpool. He's gotten closer and closer to Vanderpool to land the big shots. He's in punching this range right now, getting a good clean knockout if he has enough energy left. Vanderpool switches again out of the softball position. Don't you get out of there, guys. Come on. Don't you get out. Scrappy fight. Bernard Hopkins trying to hold on to his middleweight championship against tough Sid Vanderpool of Canada. Still to come tonight, Richard Hall facing this man, Roy Jones, for Jones's unified light heavyweight championship of the world. We're told, incidentally, that in Hall's dressing room, they put Richard's gloves on without a member of Jones's camp being there to watch it. So there could conceivably be a delay if the Jones folks ask for Hall to take the gloves back off and put them on again. Turn it with the hook. Finish it with the hook. He's you know sitting it's right worth there for checking it, son. Too. You know, I, of course it's worth checking. You, you got to believe in me. You got to believe in yourself, son. You understand me? He's going to come to you. He's coming to you. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. You got to close, son. You got to close. You got to close. You got to close the combination of the punches. Second shot. Punch is protected. Come back down under the Second shot, guys. Big crowd on hand in the Conseco Fieldhouse. 
Indianapolis, Indiana. And what a magnificent facility it is. I knew it had the reputation as we came in of being the best arena in the NBA. This is as good a multi-purpose arena as you will find anywhere in sports. CompuBox numbers in round 10. Bernard Hopkins, 21 out of 61. Sid Vanderpool, 6 out of 26. Hopkins punch output going up round by round by round down the stretch of the fight. Vanderpool's punch output, which early in the fight dwarfed that of Hopkins, is going down from round to round. And Vanderpool, to me, looks tired. Yeah, he's in new territory. I don't think he's accustomed to these late rounds. That's what happens when you have a big knockout punch. You don't get a chance to go the distance much. Hopkins pounding Vanderpool right on the left hip, George. That punch hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, Hopkins I found to be not a clean fighter at all. But sometimes you gotta win. I just think he's a rough fighter, George. I don't think he's a dirty fighter. Vanderpool's gone 12 rounds only once in his career. Bernard has done that eight times. He's fighting totally an familiar with guy it. who is turning his back on him, who's falling off balance constantly. And if you're a rough, tough fighter, Letter. stuff is going to happen. He's a dirty fighter. <laughs> All right, George. He's winning. He's doing a good shot, but I like to see them do it clean. It was Jack Dempsey who said, "Don't ever let your guard down." In a prize fight ring, you're there to be a man and to fight for your survival. That's the way Hopkins fights. Gives and takes no quarter. Look, look at the elbow hitting on the side. You know, you don't call that clean. You don't call that dirty stuff. Dempsey used rabbit punches, George. He's one of the most revered fighters in the history of the game. This is a sport. We got a lot of guys walking around on the heels, punch drunk. And a lot of it is because everybody thinks every, everything goes. Not me. I hear you. I understand your point. Hopkins gets in another blow right below the belt. Boxing is the tough enough sport without that. Referee Bill Page lecturing Hopkins, but no penalty has been issued through the whole course of the fight. And if you went back and looked at everything that had happened over 12 rounds, cumulatively, you might say, why no penalty? <laughs> when the round is over, we'll take you into Richard Hall's dressing room where we're told, just as you suggested, George, the gloves are being removed so that the Jones people can check it out. I advise that. I would tell any fighter to make them remove it. Now look, Hopkins faked the punch. Vanderpool covered up like a guy walking under an avalanche. Now this could, it could conceivably precipitate a delay. And there you see Aaron Snow, trainer to Richard Hall, pulling off the glove so that a member of Roy Jones's delegation can check the inside of the gloves. There's Mario Francis, I call him Sweetness, getting a look for himself. Tell me why it's important, George. Yeah, because a lot of times, why do you want to hide something? Some guys fold a little extra padding in the glove. Sometimes they tear a little of the inside of the opening out so the knuckles can get a little closer to the head. And if anything can be done, some of these guys will do it. Straight and you saw Carl you King, Paul's manager, you looking at Mario and saying, come on, this round big. you don't really think we try to load the glove. Come on, this punch to give you this <laughs> round. You got to get it big. I've ben. been in with guys when they made a pace out of the, the wrapping on their finger. Made pace out of it. Yeah, how about the old plaster of Paris, George? Yeah. Willard used to claim that Dempsey had plaster of Paris in his gloves July 4, 1919 in Toledo. They trade headshots and right hands at close range. Again in the 11th round, Vanderpool was able only to throw 19 punches compared to 49 from Hopkins, according to CompuBox numbers. So Bernard has stepped up the pace and Vanderpool has wilted in the late rounds. Bernard Hopkins got a lot more hard than I thought. He is filled with heart as much. Good straight right hand by Hopkins. Another straight right hand. 
Looked like he could just win it with just straight hands. Right hands. Now you talk about all the slick things that Hopkins has been able to do incidentally. We were talking about the subject of Hall's gloves when Vanderpool tried to win the fight with one big stroke right off the touching of gloves to start this round. Vanderpool is weak. Legs are weak. Hopkins just take his time, put in a jab or two. He can get a knockout, a clean knockout. Vanderpool has shown courage and stick to itiveness against one of the better fighters in the sport, but his game has vanished over the course of the 12 rounds. He's also shown a lot of amateurness, Jim. And not an eager, eager to, to really mix it up as the fight has gone on. Just winging shots from outside. They're the, the equivalent of Hail Marys. Well, I think he realized that mixing it up against a puncher as accurate as Hopkins probably wasn't a very good idea. Look at the swelling on the right side. Oh, yeah. He's going to look distorted tonight. Hopkins is a tiger. He's a tiger. But is he an executioner? Oh, he means to destroy this boy. He has a lot of tricks up his back sleeves. And he's using every one of them. Referee Bill Page has had a tough gig here. Ever that was an execution. Hopkins is the execution. Ten seconds to go in the round. Page thought that was the bell. Pulled Hopkins off at a moment when Hopkins was trying for a late TKO. And the referee costs the crowd the last ten seconds of action in the fight. Hopkins saying to us as he leans over the ropes, I had him, didn't I? I had him, didn't I? Well, you certainly had him going, Bernard. So Bill Page, listening to the signal for the last 10 seconds of the fight, mistook it for the bell and deprived Hopkins of his final opportunity to try for a late TKO. But no matter. It's impossible at this point to imagine that the scorecards could go against Hopkins, who so thoroughly dominated the closing rounds. And if we look at the fight, at the denouement of the fight in real speed, you'll hear the slapping against the canvas that indicates 10 seconds to go. And you'll see Bill Page pull Hopkins off the Vanderpool. was the bell finally at which point Hopkins came to us to say hey I had him didn't I good fight real fight <laughs> yeah it was a fight one sided down the stretch but uh, and even though Larry says that Vanderpool showed himself to be an amateur I give him I give him maybe a little more credit than that I liked his willingness. I certainly liked his energy in the early rounds. I liked the stick to with which he went the distance. He could have caved in three or four rounds ago. Not only that, he did the stuff in the earlier rounds to ensure that he would last for the, the distance. You get this guy a few, few, another year or two, some more experience, and I'm telling you, Van der Poel can do it all. Well, he's 27 years old. Let's see if he continues to improve. Give him the right fights, he can do it. Harold, how'd you score the fight? Okay, Jim, 118, 110, 10 rounds to two, Bernard Hopkins. You know, Jim, after round six, as far as scoring goes, it was all the Hopkins' right hand that totally dominated the fight. Sid Vanderpool would just fade into the ropes, cover up, and, you know, try and throw a leaping left hand, but Hopkins landed all the clean punches. Easy fight to score. And, Jim, I want to talk for one moment about the judges. You know, there's one from Canada, and Sid Vanderpool's from Canada. George Hill, an old sparring made of Benny Briscoe's from Pennsylvania, and Hopkins is from Philadelphia. But Fred Jones from Indiana last week worked our KO Nation show on HBO. And in a fight that everybody said was close, Fred Jones somehow called it 8-2 to two for Paul Spadafora over Cleveland's Mike Griffith in a fight that was really a close fight in which Spadafora only won a majority decision. So what can I say? Some judges lean toward the favorite. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer 
for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Third John scores about 118 to 110. George Hill has it 118 to 109. And Harry Davis scores it 116 to 112. All for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, the reigning and defending middleweight champion of the world, Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. I love it. Harold, I just got to point out that after your suggestion that Fred Jones was way off base last week, he scored this fight identically to you. Yes, it's true. He did. Okay. But you see, I'll in tell other you words, too. judge, not judge. You know, you know, sometimes you wonder. Uh, everybody seemed to think that it was a very clean fight last week, and yet some another. The IBF put him back this week. So. That was last week. This <laughs> week he was right on the money. Exactly. All right. Let's look at final punch stat numbers for Hopkins' conquest of Vanderpool. And you're going to see the uh, numbers that showed that Hopkins landed at a much higher percentage and wound up throwing almost as many punches as Vanderpool. Although through the first four or five rounds, Vanderpool was doubling Hopkins' punch output. And, of course, the corresponding difference in power punches, where you'll see that Hopkins landed 78 more power punches, threw 157 more power punches, and landed at a higher percentage as well. And Larry stands by with the man who has now defended his middleweight championship through 11 consecutive title defenses. What is it like? A kid like Vanderpool. All right. Bernard, what is it like facing an eager, strong, but somewhat amateurish and wild southpaw like him? Well, first of all, I'd like, like to thank God for the victory. I'd like to thank HBO and this business of boxing. Very few people keep their word. Lou DiBella, Kerry Davis, and Seth Abraham. The answer to your question is, is that this guy is strong. No one wants to really fight this kid. And he walks around at 170. He was pretty strong. But I had to dig in my bag of tricks and work on the fundamentals. I got a little anxious, you know, because this is a big night. This is a night leading up to the Roy Jones, Trinidad, uh, any other marquee fights out there from 54 to 170. And a lot of little pressure was on me, but I, I calmed down later rounds. Larry and I went back to my old uh, jab, watching punches, and he was strong. He was game. He brought the best out of me, but that wasn't actually the best performance I ever did. But I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied for now. It, 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 a lot of it looked ugly. He was lunging. You you were bringing each other down. You've been involved in fights with southpaws like that before. Does it does it feel ugly to you? Yes, but, you know, maybe they get my costume mixed up with wrestling. And maybe I should just go ahead and lead the X-Men home and maybe just, you know, get rid of the hood and let them know that I'm coming in the box. I mean, the rough and tough thing, you know, they seen Robert Allen do that the first fight, and people think they can, um, I guess, bully a bully. And I don't consider myself a bully, but it take me out of my game. But I, you know, I got caught up a little bit, and I got back to myself, and then I execute. You did execute. Uh, tell us what your thoughts are, A, about the fact you've now had 11 successful defenses. Marvin Hagler had 12. Uh, Monzone had 14. Do you have any ambitions? Does it mean anything to you to keep this going and maybe even to uh, break a record for middleweight defenses? Yes, this is my 12th defense. Carlos Mazzone is uh, in the history books for 14. Already passed Marvin Hagler. My biggest goal was, Larry, ever since I was small, to be the undisputed middleweight champion in the world like Marvin Hagler was 11 to 12 years ago. That was my goal. It still is my goal. But if it don't happen, bring on Roy Jones Jr., who the best superstar for Michael Jordan in boxing. And I like to do it at a catch weight where we both are comfortable. All right. He beat you at 160 pounds. What claim can you make that you'll do better against him as a, as a light heavyweight? Like the sweat on his body, I will be so close to Roy Jones Jr. where he'll think I'm a part of his boxing gear. You can't give Roy Jones Jr. any breaks. You got to be able to gamble with Roy Jones Jr., which I wasn't willing to do early in my career. And listen, Larry, like Michael Grant said, and I can relate to him, when I fought on HBO in 1993, I had to go to the bathroom, but I couldn't go then. And you know what I mean? This is pressure. I've got 12 thousand defenses. I've been here before. I'm not the same fighter I was seven years ago that I am today. Trust me, when I fight Roy Jones Jr., Roy Jones Jr. gonna know he was in a fight. What about the option of fighting some of the junior middleweights like Trinidad, like Corte, like Vargas? Can you make a catchweight 
between middleweight and junior middleweight, or can you come down all the way down to 54? Correct. I can make 154. I don't want them to give me anything. I want to earn like I have been in my career for 12 years. I will fight Vargas at 54, Corte at 54, De La Hoya at any weight he chooses to weigh in. I will fight Otorio Gatti, who's walking around as a middleweight. I will fight anybody from 54 to 170. I don't care where it is, and I'm willing to take a dollar too short to prove I'm the best pound for pound or one of the great fighters that came around in the last 20 years. Thank you very much, Bernard. Happy Again, Mother's congratulations. To all the mothers, including your mother and your wife. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Jim. All right, now that he's called out all the stars in two separate weight divisions, uh, let's talk about the Roy Jones prospect. Obviously, Bernard is a proven middleweight champion. Is he the kind of fighter who could make a difference against Roy Jones fighting at a catchweight between 160 and 175, say 168, or is Roy too...